Any student who their favorite teacher is or who their favorite coach is, they'd probably give you an answer pretty quick and they could probably tell you why. Whether or not it's a reason or not, they could still have a reason and say which one is their favorite. So same thing goes for for club coaches, for you know, for club teams. For, for a coach to say that they don't have favorites, any coach I would say that is a lie because there are some players who take training more serious there are some players who are more committed, right? You think of your normal variety of players on any team. Some are more serious, some are less serious, some are, right? Some grow the group efforts more and some grow the group efforts less. So I don't think you should focus on whether or not favoritism exists and what to do about it, right? Because the only thing you could do is grow your own personal game as a parent so that you can help your, become your kid's training partner off the field. Right, I tell the story so often that, you know, I was blessed that my parents, you know, would bring me all around the world, playing, training, everything, tournaments, yet, and, you know, they would pay for speed, speed training and, you know, skills training, all this stuff, yet they didn't, they didn't value the joy that we could create with each other if they learned how to juggle, right? You think you're going to be going to the practices and the games and the tour tournaments anyway, if you can just go back and forth between your kids with the thighs juggling, you can really increase the joy that you have with your kids, right? You're getting moving. It's like you could do a little warm up before team warm up starts. And, and I think most parents, they discount or they'll say, they'll say, oh, well, I'll make my kids worse or I'm not that good or I got a sore ankle or I got a sore back or they just have all these reasons why they won't just start juggling with their kids. Maybe their kids are embarrassed. Maybe they try to, you know, their kids don't want to, but I just think that, you know, 10 minutes, a, a minute a day, if you're a parent listening to this, 60 seconds a day with a bouncy ball with your hands to your thighs, right? Drop the ball to your, th your thigh and pop it back up to your right, to your hand, right? So thigh catch, thigh catch, saying it out loud, thigh catch, thigh catch. And over time, you do this for 60 seconds, for 60 days straight. If you can get to the point where picnics, holidays, barbecues, birthdays, everywhere, everywhere that you guys are, you could be just juggling, man. Juggling is the one thing that can really elevate any player, right? They say not all the best jugglers are the best players but all the best players are always the best jugglers and this is one thing that you could do everywhere right with the size one ball tennis ball bouncing ball volleyball whatever ball you have just get it going second thing you want to keep in mind is every trade has their tools you think a bartender's got their it's got like a wine key and and you know a jigger or whatever you think a chef has a has a colander or, or a chef's knife or a cutting board there's a lot of tools well not a lot there's two tools in particular besides a size one ball besides a size one ball and the first one is an rmt one and the second one is an sklz solo kick trainer a kick trainer is just a ball and a rope and i've tested out a lot and i've come to the conclusion that the SKLZ Solo Kick Trainer is my favorite because it's cheap, it's lightweight, you could fit it in your backpack, right? It's super portable. The only downside is that the handle, a piece of the handle comes off rather quickly, but that's an easy fix. You could just throw some duct tape on there. But the key to using this tool is you don't wanna buy it for your kids. If you just buy it for your kids, they're not gonna understand how to use it they're not going to, they're not going to have a framework mentally of what joyful play with this tool looks like. So you have to, you have to trick them. You have to trick them into using it and not in a deceitful way, but you have to set the, you have to set the kick trainer, the SKLZ solo kick trainer approximately to their height. And then they have to see you using it, right? It's monkey see monkey do. If they see you getting a lot of touches, laces, insides, outsides, behind the back, you know, you know, using both hands, one-legged balance, wide stance, you know, just having fun with it, messing around, then the chances that they use it too go up significantly. 
right? Because now they say, oh, that's how I use it, right? So just right foot, left foot, right foot, right foot, left foot, left foot, just get a lot of touches with it. And you can find this at Dick's Sporting Goods. You can find this at Walmart. Walmart usually has them. So on Amazon, it's like, this, this is a tool, it's great for not only advanced players, but even, but for beginners, especially because, because a lot of players get frustrated. They kick the ball, they haven't form, they haven't formalized their striking technique. And instead of spending a lot of time chasing the ball, if they don't have a, tra a training partner, this ball comes back, it comes back right around. So you're getting instant feedback when you miss hit it. And it's making it so that it makes your, it, it's like pure, it's pure, um, it's all upside. There's no recovery time, right? And you're, you're spending zero time chasing it, which means all you're doing is getting raw touches. So uh, this is something that I, I wish I would have spent more time using as a younger player. And the second is, a, is an RMT rope, which is just a variation of a jump rope, right? As you swing a, a piece of rope in your hands, Generally, you want it as long as you are tall. As you swing it with, with one hand, both hands, or the opposite hand, you just get a better understanding of where your body is in time and space. And for soccer players who are running for between 60 and, and 90 minutes, depending on their, their age group, often multiple times in a day, if you don't know where your body is when you're moving, if you're uncoordinated, if you see someone with poor who has poor running mechanics or they just seem, right, like they seem like a baby giraffe, this is for you, right? Someone who's always having uh, uh, constant injuries, sore ankles, sore hips, elbows, right? With a simple tool, you can make at any hardware store, just get a piece of rope as long as you are tall, then they can start to gr grow grow their, their strength through movement, right? It's effortless strength through movement and how this relates to the original question of, of what should I do about favoritism in clubs? The answer is become the favorite player. Like be the player who comes to practice five minutes early, 10 minutes early, 15 minutes early, and gets the ball up on a juggle, is doing dynamic warm-ups, is doing push-ups, pull-ups, um, sit-ups, right? Headstands, just moving around, getting the rest of the team going instead of on their phone, hands in their pockets, on the bench, bring it down, bring it down, whole team energy, right? So, so that's the answer. Grow, grow your game, grow your, yourself and your, if, if you're a parent listening to this and you can grow, become your son's or daughter's training partner off the field, then you're gonna help them grow their game on the field, right? Because what you're doing is raising their training intensity and training intensity in an effortless way in a in a playful joyful way instead of you know telling them they need to go do that instead of yelling at them saying oh you need to go do skills work in the back or how come you're not doing you know i bought these dumbbells how come you're not using them it's, it's monkey see monkey do do all the stuff that you're telling them to do and they'll usually they'll probably follow uh, and they'll probably follow along and if they're not following along and they're just not excited to just do the thing with you, then maybe they don't, you know, maybe soccer is not for them. And that's okay, right? So, and then you just talk with them, say, hey, what do you want to do? Because a lot of parents, they get blinded by their own enthusiasm for this sport. It's almost like living vicariously through their kids, which is a shame. So hopefully this helps. Reach out with any questions, 508-505-1180. All right, thank you.